in videos 8 and 9 we proved this identity with the uh, Epsilon permutation symbol and the Kronecker Delta symbol. Now we're going to use this to prove this vector identity. And in this video we're really going to draw upon our knowledge now from our previous videos, um, in particular videos 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 where we did a lot of manipulations using the Epsilon permutation symbol. What we have is a cross product A cross B and that cross product vector take the dot product of it with this cross product. We want to prove that it's equal to this expression. Now for A cross B let's call that vector F and C cross D we'll call that vector G. So we have vector f dot vector g. In component form, that will be f i g sub i, writing the dot product in component form. So let's get an expression then for f sub i using the permutation symbol. So we know vector f equals the permutation symbol AB times some unit vector. We want that unit vector to be designated as I as we've done in the previous videos because that means the rest of this will be F sub I. And here we can have J K Epsilon J K I. where, as we've demonstrated in our previous videos, this part right here then is F sub I. So we have equals Epsilon J K I A sub J B sub K. And likewise we want an expression for G sub I. Well, vector G will be epsilon C D times some unit vector. We want to designate that unit vector as I, and the rest of this expression will be G sub I. We can't say J and K. We've used those already. So we will say L and M. So this would be L M I. where this expression, this part of the expression, is G sub I, as we've demonstrated in our previous videos. So G sub I equals epsilon L M I C sub L D sub M. Now notice that When we're using the our identity here, we have epsilon i j k and epsilon i l m. Well, this equals epsilon i j k because if I just move this over once, twice, that's an even permutation. So j k i and i j k they're the same. So we'll just do it like this. Those are equal. It's an even permutation, and these indexes still match. Likewise, here we can move this over once, twice, an even permutation. That will be the same as this, and these indexes still match. Now we're saying that. This dot product in component form is F sub I times G sub I. This is F sub I. This is G sub I. So what we're saying is that A cross B dot C cross D 
equals this times this. So we have epsilon ijk a sub j b sub k times epsilon ilm d sub l d this is c sub l not d sub l C sub L, D sub M. Okay, now we're ready. Now, as we've gone over in the previous videos, with these double indexes, we're assigning values 1, 2, and 3 independently, multiplying and adding. The order in which we do it doesn't make any difference. These are just scalars. So we can write this expression like this. equals epsilon ijk times epsilon ilm a sub j b sub k c sub l d sub m. Now we're ready to use our identity. Epsilon ijk epsilon ILM is this. So we're going to write this in place of this in our next line. So this equals delta JL delta KM minus delta KL delta JM. This is this. Oops. This is this from our identity. Then we have AJ B sub K C sub L D sub M. So what we have is these this pair of Kronecker deltas times these scalars, or operating on these scalars, minus this pair of conical deltas operating on these scalars. And let's see what effect they have. So this equals, now we look at this, this is 0 unless j equals l, then it equals 1. So this j is going to become an l, and this is 0 unless k changes to M. So this K becomes an M, then that's equal to 1. So when J equals L and K equals M, we have 1 times this, where the J changes to an L and the K changes to an M. So that will equal A sub L times C sub L. Then we will have B sub M times D sub M. Then we have minus. Now what effect do these have on these scalars? So this is 0 unless K equals L. Then it becomes 1. So that K is going to become an L. And that J has to be an M. So this J changes to an M. When K becomes L, that equals 1. When J becomes M, that equals 1. So we have minus A sub M times d sub m, and then we will have b sub l, c sub l. So that is the effect then that th 
this expression has on these scalars. It changes the indexes so that we now have this expression. Now this, a sub L, c sub L, that's component form for a dot c. This is component form for b dot d. This is component form for a dot d. And that is component form for b dot c. So what we have then is this, which equals this, comes out to equal this. And this is the identity that we want to prove. a dot c, b dot d, minus a dot d, b dot c. Which is what we had right up here at the top. So that finishes the problem. So hopefully you appreciate how elegant this identity is and how powerful it is. And we will have some other demonstrations of this in the future videos. Um, the playlist for this video series, the playlist for other videos actually, is at the website digital-university.org.